Single parenting isn't easy. We understand. Most parents don't plan to go it alone, but you can still make the most of this journey for your children and yourself. In fact, if you and your family are on that journey, this podcast is for you. Welcome to the Single Parent Advocate community and to our podcast. And here are your hosts, single parent founder, Stacey Poitras, broadcast journalist, single dad and friend, Daryl Moody. Hi there. Welcome back. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Daryl Moody. I am joining you from my home studios here in Orlando, Florida. Stacy Porthras, she is the single parent advocate. You are there in SPA Central there at the Work Innovator Studios, Venture X Castle Hills in Dallas, Texas. Uh, yes. Stacy, how are you today? I'm doing great. It rained in Dallas today, so we're like super excited. It's been in the 90s and the 100s and it's getting hot, so the rain's a nice break and Everything's I was been real say, busy today. I feel like you guys had a lot of rain in the spring. Did that has that dried up for you? Yeah, it dried up and then uh, you know got real hot. It usually does this time of year. So yeah, whatever whatever rain you had, it's come to Florida, and and we're in our typical uh, summertime pattern where you have the sea breeze showers that converge kind of in the middle spine of the state. And then you have pretty good thunderstorms uh, throughout the afternoon. But that's, you know, we deal with that every day. So uh, let's do our normal housekeeping right now where we kind of catch up on all of the things that Single Parent Advocate is doing. Of course, we have the big back to school supply drive already underway. Uh, you guys have teamed up with Amazon Smile as a way to, uh, to allow folks to buy the supplies that you guys need and raise a little extra money for Single Parent Advocate. Stacy, catch us up to date on that. So what we did is we published a shopping list on Facebook. Everybody can go to Single Parent Advocate on Facebook and you can uh, pick an item and uh, donate there. Or if you'd like, you can go uh, to our donate page and, um, you know, decide to fill a backpack. It usually costs us about $20 $20 to fill a backpack for either an elementary person, young person, or, uh, you know, a high school or middle school person, young person. And um, what we do is we really go throughout um, the Metroplex and look at all the school lists and we kind of harmonize them. And we separate our backpacks into uh, elementary boy, elementary girl, which is, is designed uh to really harmonize with kindergarten through fifth grade. It's um, then we separated elementary, or I'm sorry, middle school and high school boy and girl and make those lists because they tend to be mostly similar. What we want is to A, help single parents in the area of getting the basics covered as well as turning around and making it to where they can really just spend their time finding finding and locating all of the unique items because sometimes teachers in different classes, you know, they'll have unique items so our goal is to be able to provide the financial relief you know and the time relief of the families that are nominated for our care to be able to you know make going back to school a a little more easy but also freeing up the parents time to do the shopping for the special items with their kids you know and kind of being present and staying involved in that so we're going to be partnering with Matthew 6 Ministries and Fellowship for Life Church Church. We're going to be on location there, um, packing backpacks at the end of July and then distributing them the first Saturday in August. And so all of the back to school elves are busy beavers right now. And so we just really are grateful for anybody who will hop online. Uh, they can uh, hop online and like you said, go to smile.amazon.com, pick Single Parent Advocate as their charity. And then um, on Facebook, you'll see the address here at the VentureX uh, Work Innovator Studios. They can just have those items shipped here to the attention of Single Parent Advocate. And we'll make sure that these get put in the backpacks of some kids and lifting lives of um, not uh, not just the kids but of the parents and the whole family whenever uh, we have them come through there at the beginning of August so we're, we're pretty pumped about that I'm also sending out a poll a poll 
to make sure that um, if we have single parents in our population that are going to college, it's our goal to help uh, these families as much as possible with purchasing their books. Because books can get pretty expensive when you're in college. Mm -hmm. Even if you buy a used book or you uh, have the option of using an e-book, um, by the time you add yourself and your kids and the supplies and everything all up, it can be a pretty penny. So we're just trying to come alongside each of these families that are, uh, you know, improving their education and help them out a bit. So it'll be and, fun. And I, just, and I just want to make sure you had mentioned having boys' backpacks and girls' backpacks. Now, the boys' backpack is going to have the Trapper Keeper with the with the Lamborghini on it, right? And then the girls' backpack will have the Trapper Keeper with the with the with the Pegasus dancing in the clouds, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, we got sparkles, and then but we also have you know some uh, young ladies who are more athletes, you know, and so they like you know the blues and blacks and grays, just like the guys do. And we have some guys they want to have you know different ones and so we just try to keep it simple and give a great selection we actually buy backpacks all year long uh, the team will go when the backpacks are on sale at the end of back to school season and we'll nab up as many backpacks as we possibly can around town smart. and yeah and then we store them and we're looking for deals on school supplies and office supplies all year long we even have some companies that will say hey you know i want to contribute and they'll go and to their office supply store and they'll ship us you know some uh supplies too you know whether it's pens or erasers or you know construction paper we usually have to order construction paper it's really hard to find the construction paper mm -hmm. manila paper is is tougher than you you think and then finding all of the scientific calculators for the older students you know ti-83s so the ti-86s yeah. yeah and then um you know this just kind of helps the parents focus on getting their kids clothes you know it's my dream someday to be able to give the kids you know clothes but those are you know very unique and personal choices sometimes that the families have to make so we just try to keep it simple cover the basics so the parents can go out there and do the personal shopping with their kids and make sure that they have time to have that fun together and and bond sure Yep. And, and any any expense you can save a family when it comes to back to school time, you know, especially a single parent household, that uh, that certainly helps. Yeah, it keeps the lights on, right? You know, um, two kids can cost you know anywhere from three to six hundred dollars to get the the whole you know clothes, school supplies, uh, all the different things they have to sign up for at school. You know, it can be really a dent in the old budget for sure so we want to try to just lean in and do what we can and and so we do well i was going to say you know for me my kids go to a magnet school so they wear uniforms and you know as a parent man that just takes all the guesswork out of it it's like you know all i got to just match the polo and the bottoms and then it just makes everything so easy but even if you have uniforms the kids grow and change you know like in a nickel of a minute you know they just absolutely you know all of a sudden you can't use it again you know and um so but often you know the schools will have the trades where you know you can take your old clothes in if they're you know gently used and you can kind of do a swap uh, when my son was in christian school he had um, a way where we could all the parents could get together and see if we had hand-me-downs we could give each other's kids and that really helped a lot too you know sure. so um we haven't got to the point to where we really got into the clothes as it relates to the back to school outreach yet but i can tell you know as we grow it'll it'll be something that we want to be able to allow everybody but there's so many variables it's hard to know what's meaningful so that's why we decided to focus on you know what's in common and and cover those basics and let the families kind of lean in on you know the nuances of each child's grade in school and you know uh, wardrobe. We will be providing masks again uh, this year. I know that um, a lot of families, you know, probably have a lot of questions about that. I, I did speak with uh, a DISD uh, staff person and they are going to be recommending masks. So we're going to make an effort to make sure we provide masks again this year too. Uh, to that, to that point, 
are the the school districts they're going to make it optional for kids uh, you they, recommend they, they, something without requiring yeah they they said the the uh masks are strongly recommended okay. but they're not uh gonna enforce anything is is my impression right now of course and everything changes on a dime but that's you know here at the very very beginning of july that's that's where we're at yeah and that's and that's what most of the uh school districts here around central florida are doing of course orange county has yet to make their decision they're going to wait till the middle of july uh but uh yeah all of the all of the school districts around here are making it optional and saying you know we recommend that you wear it but you don't have to so yeah so we had a we had our first donation of binders you know we have to have two inch three ring binders and so every every student will get that and uh so that's super big deal for us we're super excited and, and grateful to tms consulting for that and you know we just want the business community the parents themselves and anyone who wants to help with this to jump on board with us Matthew Six, Half Fines, um, all of the Louisville Chamber of Commerce. There are so many people helping. And then we even have a donated host location in uh, an area near here. It's an area church. And uh, so we're, we're really excited and all that's online. So definitely Facebook, Single Parent Advocate, go to the events and our team has put up as much information as possible for everybody to kind of know the drill and, and get involved. It's going to be fun. Awesome. So yeah. uh, go to singleparentadvocate.org or go to smile.amazon.com where you can purchase the supplies for the back to school drive. You can also uh, have a portion of the proceeds go directly to Single Parent Advocate. So that's awesome. Yep. We're really grateful for all, all the people who help out. Help out. Fantastic. So let's get into the real meat of this week's episode, and that is kids and screen time. Uh, and this, you know, the reason we decided to, to, to tackle this subject matter this week was because we talked uh, last week about my daughter Elise's birthday. And uh, one of the gifts that I got her was an iPad. She turned eight and I got her an iPad. And you, Stacy, were like, what do you mean you got her an iPad? That sounds crazy. And I, you know, my, my original justification for buying the iPad was that she uses iReady in school. And iReady has a desktop computer platform, and then they have the iPad platform. So they don't have, like, they don't do just a regular tablet platform. So uh, I'm not buying her her own desktop computer. So I got her an iPad. Uh, but there is a slippery slope to that in that now my daughter has completely unfettered access to YouTube. And uh, the subject matter of kids and YouTube, I actually talked about it in my own podcast, Not Mood with Daryl Moody. And uh, I had an expert where we talked about kind of the perils of allowing your kids to have that much screen time, maybe some of the things you're supposed to look out for. And, I, and the conclusion that I came to for me and my household was that you know, as long as I can limit their time on it and I'm aware of what they're watching and what they're doing with the iPad, I'm kind of okay with letting them have it for now. Now, that being said, uh, I have to use YouTube as a disciplinary tool in my home. So my youngest, Claire, who is going to turn six in August, has been getting in trouble at summer camp, putting her hands on other kids, not following instructions when they're doing swimming lessons and all that. So she's been barred from the pool. Wow. And, uh, and and when and when she comes home on Wednesday, there will be no YouTube for Claire Bear. Wow. What does she watch on YouTube? Uh, they're called one, two, three go videos. They're like these. They talk about different. They call them hacks. You know, they're like, oh, you can do this if you uh, if your hair looks bad or you want to have bangs, you can flip your ponytail forward and, and, you know, just different things like that. That's so it's obviously programming that is geared for uh, toward children. Uh, you know, as the parent who comes into the living room and they're like, oh, well, let's watch this together. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating for me because, you know, my thing is, hey, can we watch some professionally produced content, perhaps made by people who know what they're doing and not just amateurs with a YouTube channel? So, uh, I, you know, I, I have it on on the TV in the kids playroom and I can see what they're watching from the from the kitchen, but I make it very clear to them. I have no interest in watching YouTube with them. Now you had a different situation. Your son was is, is older, obviously. So he, uh, you know, YouTube and technology and screen time wasn't as pervasive when, when, when he was six and eight years old. So, so give me your take on this. 
So when Chris was six, you know, it was more uh, the the buzz around, you know, raising your kids was, you know, don't let the TV be a babysitter. You know, you don't want to just, you know, let your kids come home and plop them in front of the TV to keep them busy while you clean and cook and take care of the chores around the house, you know, or, uh, you know, maybe you, you know, you have a, a middle school uh, child and, you know, they end up being latchkey because once they're 12, they can come home from school and do their homework and kind of chill. And then, you know, you come home from work and then you have your family time. And so, um, you know, it, I think it's kind of the same concept now that technology has changed so much, you know, and then of course we had social media take off and everything. And I thought about, you know, getting Chris a phone more um, about, you know, emergency and communication and staying in touch while I was at work because I would work 40 and 60 hours a week. Um, you know, more, more like 40, but sometimes in my job and, you know, in the media, sometimes you have to go out and entertain a client or you get to go out and entertain a client. You know, those are always wonderful times, you know, and, um, you know, because you become such partners in business, you know, and so when you get to go out to dinner and have some quality time with your clients, it's always fun. But as a single parent, you know, What did I have? You know, I had friends who had older students, you know, uh, that would maybe come over and they'd watch movies or or hang out together. But I still needed to be able to communicate with him, you know. And so to me, it was, you know, is the TV being your babysitter? That was a check and balance. But also making sure that you had a way to communicate and stay in touch with each other, you know, for emergencies or sometimes just, you know, some days are long and, you know, just needing, how are you, you know, and staying connected. So um, I think I got him his first phone probably when he was uh, maybe 11 or 12, you know, but mostly I would stay in touch with the family that he was with in between the times when I got home, uh, you know, but, or he would be in extended childcare. And so I, I went kind of like a whole different approach. He was in extended t- child care. And then when he got old enough to where he was not in uh, st- child care anymore, I got the phone and just really tried really hard, <laughs> you know, to not be disengaged, even though I was working a long, a long lot of hours, you know. Well, well and, and you, you talk about don't let the kid, don't, don't let the TV raise your kids. But I mean, you know, you mentioned it as a single parent, you're the one getting dinner ready. You're the one cleaning the house. Like, you know, we can't, we can't occupy the kids and do everything that needs to be done to keep the, keep the thing rolling. You know what I mean? So it's like, you, it's a, it becomes a necessary evil. At least it has in my house. Well, and, you know, we had a lot of times where I'd come in and it was was late and he would have done his homework uh, before I got there. So there was no doing homework together. Now, he did not like math. And I thought, you know, the new math was really pretty difficult, honestly. I always prided myself in being really good at math, you know. And so that was the whole math thing was kind of crazy for us to navigate. And we had, you know, some spelling uh you know like doing the spelling words the day before the spelling test while i was cooking or whatever Mm -hmm. and i found myself at the end of a day coming home kind of doing that kind of stuff being really impatient or being like you know i just wasn't in the right mindset you know and so i think for me when he was able to to spend time with me you know i needed it to not be in front of the tv we had to be communicating you know but also the technology uh when he was a little bit older staying in touch really made me feel at ease that he's doing well and all of that he's not stuck you know um you know either with uh, something he had to do with his homework or maybe stuck in his social life, either bored or, you know, different things like that. So 
I, I liked the idea on the days when it was a combination of the whole thing working together, you know, staying engaged, staying in touch, and then having some downtime in R&R to, to watch TV and chill a little bit, but just not that being the whole gist of how we lived our lives, you know, in front of the TV. Back oh, then, sure. I, I loved Grey's Anatomy. I would watch dip my TV shows, too, but then I would always be you know watering the plants and doing the chores and talking to him as well maybe maybe kind of a little helicopter momish to be confessing you know at the, well, you know but to your point when you're talking about kids and electronics you know you want to be able to supervise them you want to be able to know what they're watching so you gotta you gotta be kind of close so and the electronics have a purpose like to me that was the the main thing i guess i'm trying to get around to is that the they have perks and like you said they but they have a purpose like in your in in your case it's a you know an educational app right that they need to have uh for me it was i'm working long hours far from home and i need to stay in touch and then yeah later on you know he had completely online school and uh you know he, he, when he was 100 percent online he could fly through a lot of stuff but chris would tell you he preferred when he had a teacher and they walked through things and he could talk about them you know not just 100 percent online he didn't really like that at all he didn't um get as much out of it so what well you talk about him having a having a phone uh my uh, lisa's mom gave her a phone an iphone uh but she doesn't get to carry with her. She only gets to use it at limited times. And I think it was really more because she didn't want Elise to find something on her phone. So she goes, here's your iPhone. Uh, but yeah, Elise doesn't get to carry it with her. So it's not really, you know, to your point, it's not necessarily a tool that she can use to stay connected because, you know, she's only allowed to use it when she's at her mother's house and when her mother lets her use it. So, uh, but it really, it, it was kind of fun being able to text with my daughter you know, while I'm anchoring newscasts and then between the newscasts, I'm anchoring or I'm texting with yeah. my, uh, that was a unique experience. I did get a kick out of that. And I like the way that, you know, you know, depending on the phone you get, you know, and what you can afford, you know, there's a lot of artistic things uh, people can learn at a, a younger age, you know, with photography and videography and, you know, it just changes with the speed of light. You know, we've got the advent now of TikTok and Instagram's on fire. And then there's Snapchat and all the different places where the, you know, everybody stays in touch. But, um, you know, what I find is a lot of the clinical approaches to technology and kids, uh, there's some strong advice out there um, about, you know, what to be on the lookout for and what we can do, you know, as parents to be on the learn and be engaged. And I found this article at the TOT, the TOT.com. And it talks about the impact of technology on behavior. Have you ever seen that? I I know that my kids behave differently when, when they've had too much screen time. I know that for sure. Yeah. No I don't kidding. know exactly what the science is, but, it, but yeah, when they, when they spend hours and hours on, t on end with the, with the uh, you know, whether it's an app or a cell phone or it just, the more screen time, the, 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 the behavior goes south for me anyway. Well, what, what this, um, what this article talked about, you know, was about, and I took some notes, um, it talked about, you know, too much time with technology, too much screen time really causes a decrease in critical thinking, meaning um, it really decreases the ability of um, a young adult and probably even younger, uh, the ability to expand thoughts, you know, it talks yeah. about having a shortened attention span. You know? well, that's what I was just going to say. If I could just jump in now, is that because of the instant gratification aspect of using these electronics? Is it that the kids, you know, they don't have to think anything through because it comes at them so fast and it's like, you know what I mean? It just kind of dumbs them down. Is that, is that the, the, the thought process there? Well, you know, or, you know, like back in the day when we all had the remote control and we're just switching channels, switching channels, switching channels, you know, and really just not having the attention and the discipline to pay attention fully or be present in a conversation. 
um, it talked about, you know, also how when somebody gives us all of our own visuals, you know, like if you read a book and you don't have a picture with it and you're reading the story, your imagination creates all of the pictures, right? And you try to imagine all of the things the author's describing, right? But if you're just watching something, they serve it to you. And so your imagination doesn't really create those pictures anymore was kind of the gist of it that I got. And so kind of the critical thinking, problem solving, it's all done for you if you're on video, right? Well, you know? Well, and it's almost like you're blocking a pathway inside inside your own brain. Yeah. And so, you know, that's why they said, you know, educational videos, things that are, you know, games, things that make that part of your mind kind of wake up, right? really important or skills training like you know you can get an app on an iPad that teaches you to play the piano uh, it c can teach you to um, I don't know uh, it's not just a video that teaches you how to do your hair in different ways it actually teaches you a skill you know and so I I've had people even do voice lessons and do vocal eases on on a tablet or on on a device you know so just making sure that woven in there there's something that makes your imagination and your critical thinking kind of come alive versus you know just sitting back and being served right now now i, I can hear the listeners now saying <laughs> like you know the kids don't need a, a device why would you hand a device to a little kid they're going to use these devices for the rest of their lives stacy they're here I mean, you can fight it, but there's there's no sense in it. I mean, you may as well get the kids comfortable with the technology now. And like set, I said, yeah, set some right rules with it. Oh yeah, know? no, absolutely. I, you have to be involved. You have to know what they're watching. You have to be able to see it and hear it. You know, to monitor it. But uh, you know, to just say a kid doesn't need a device in their hands, I just think that's short sighted and ignorant nowadays with all of the technology that we have nowadays and with all the ways that we've become dependent upon it. I feel yeah. like you're really kind of doing a kid disservice if you don't teach them how to use an iPhone. Right, but just also having, you know, one of the things that I think the biggest withholds parents have and certainly, you know, uh, clinicians is privacy and safety. You know, um, young, young people can get on social media um, or, and compare there's cyberbullying that's been a huge issue you know um so you know trying to make sure that the rules that are set up and the the rule the way that we allow them to participate in technology is governed with an eye toward you know making sure that they're on the right platforms and they're not set up for failure with um being open to either building uh, FOMO, you know, fear of missing out or comparing themselves to each other and always feeling like they're inadequate or, you know, God forbid, being involved with somebody who's going to bully them online, you know, and, uh, you know, doing the, the due diligence as a parent and every, every family's got their unique situation, but, you know, just set them up to win, put some safeguards in there and, um, so that was another thing that they really recommended and really watching out for self-image. I can see that, especially with girls. Yeah, I think so. But I mean, making sure that they're not critical of themselves with, you know, just based on what they're seeing, uh, you know, in, in various websites and apps and social media networks, that sort of thing. But I think it happens for the guys too, you know. Um, you know, but just, you know, being conscious of it for sure. And then the other thing they talked about was, um, you know, for younger children, like, you know, when you're talking about six years old and younger, you know, how motor skills can be affected. And um, also developing hand-eye coordination, like if you're on the screen too much, the hand-eye and the distance and the coordination with that actually gets affected or could get affected, you know, so... You know, it's just a matter of, of kind of, you know, too much of a good thing can turn into a bad thing. And so creating a way, you know, where that's structured. They had some uh, recommendations, but when I, when I was reading all of this, I was like, okay, I'm just throwing it out there. Spell check. I think that, you know, 
I, t- I brought up earlier, you know, we had the spelling tests, you know, learning how to spell the words. And uh, now the days, you know, a lot of spelling, you know, is done for us. <laughs> and so spell check, I don't know. What do you think about spell check, Daryl? I think, I think spell check has had as detrimental an impact on our society as Jersey Shore, the Kardashians, uh, Old Town Road. I mean, you know, you can, you can, you can add it to many, many things that are just <laughs> dumbing us down as a society. Predictive texts, man. Like when you're, when you're texting something out, you're thumbing it out on your phone and it, you know, it predicts what you want to text. It's like, you know, I, at some point we have to balance the, uh, you know, the, the, the convenience aspect of all of this with still forcing us to think for ourselves, right. still forcing us to spell for ourselves and to write for ourselves. Exactly. Well, so, you know, I think that, you know, I get the privilege of working with some college students and high school students that are all wicked smart. And um, but I think that, you know, because I like to work in the con- content creation space, uh, to me, I've noticed that some words that I would like naturally just know, they're difficult. People have to do spell check because oh, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not. And you find yourself and you're like, wait, how do we spell difference again? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And like, that's a word that you should know how to spell. You would think. So, I, you know, it's just one of those little thoughts I jotted down. I'm like, that may be like one thing I can actually say I've noticed. It's not that it's a bad thing or somebody isn't going to get a job you know, or something, because usually, you know, computers that would be required to be used, certainly, you know, different tasks that would have to be done, you know, to get a job, probably spell check is a tool that we would have access to. But if you think about it along the way, if you're looking to, you know, improve is do a little bit of extra work in the spelling department. (laughs) And, you know, yeah, but how do you know spell check is right? If you don't know some of this information for yourself, right? No. Mm-mm. Anyway, that's my rant. But um, okay, so there were five things that the tot.com article said that, that we can do as parents um, to just make sure that we're right sizing technology in the lives of our homes and our kids. It said um, be informed and aware, not just informed and aware, but be involved, not just in the trends of technology and and all of, of the social media that we allow our kids uh, to be engaged with whenever we do give them a device. They said, you know, not just the trends, be aware of what your your student or your child is using you know it, it's okay to like be you know aware of trends but it's really you know knowing what's touching your child and your family and and you know kind of knowing what's out there but also knowing what's in your home and what's in your in your your child's hands and head and then it said secondly encourage uh, that when we mentioned this a minute ago encourage educational games and shows so that that critical thinking piece of of our lives and our brains and how we problem solve that we're not really inhibiting problem solving we want uh, to be able to have hand-eye coordination. We want to be able to make sure that we're not letting the machine do things 100% for us, you know? And so uh, that was the second thing they said. And then um, this is something you've touched on, Daryl, before about having an open relationship with our kids, Um, you know, just making sure that it's safe to talk to us about technology and what's happening that, you know, if we create an environment where we're, we are living in fear of technology and, and things like that, that, um, that doesn't create a great space for our children to be able to ask questions, run things by us, you know, uh, I don't know. Do you have any input about that? I know this is really something you feel strongly about. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. I, I, I don't, you know, it's a slippery slope, but if you are hands-on about it, I mean, you know, if you tell your kid, Hey, if you're going to take your iPad into your, into your room, the door stays open and the, and, and the earbuds stay off. So I need to be able to hear and see what you're watching. So it's, it's all about just being involved. It's all about like, you know, like you said, you can't, 
you can't hand them the iPad and say, all right, take off, go, go do whatever you're going to do. It's, you know, why don't you sit at the dining room table while I make dinner and you can watch your iPad and then I'll know what you're doing. So, exactly. Well, yeah. and the other thing that uh, just kind of splurped back into my head was about, you know, when you have when you hand a child a phone, you know, you can actually uh, make it to where when they get a text, you can read it, you know, depending on their their how young they are. I mean, that's kind of big brotherish, you know, but I think for a while, you know, maybe you share the iTunes, maybe you share you know, uh, the texting for a little bit and just try to make sure that you're aware. I mean, obviously I'm going to have to sort all this out with my ex-wife when the time comes. But for me, like, I don't see any need whatsoever why my kids need to have any kind of social media presence before they're 13. Right. And, and of course, all of that's going to change by the time your kids are 13. <laughs> well, by the time they're 13, they're going to have it, you know, they're going to have a chip in there. They're going to be able to talk in their hands yeah. like this. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's all going to be there. We're all going to be riding in the in the sky. Well, and, and to, to the to the viewers and the listeners, listen, we're not the experts here. We're not telling you exactly how you should do it. We're just kind of giving you our two cents. I, I'm, I'm going through this right now. You've already gone through it. Uh, and, and that's really what we're trying to do is just kind of share our personal experiences. And maybe some of the some of the listeners and viewers have similar stories they can share. Oh, yeah. In fact, that was the next thing. Um, they said as parents and, you know, to remember that we're role models. Um, I can't remember her exact words, but we need to model what good behavior as it relates to technology looks like. And, you know, make sure that we have unplugged time and, you know, we show them not just say, okay, it's time for you to be unplugged and take the phone away, but we live that way together. You know, we want to go to like the dinner table and put our phones down for a little bit and make each other a priority and be present, you know, or have game night that's not a technology game and or you know, whatever the activity is, go going for walks or going to, uh, you know, something together where we can communicate and and do so uh, more fully without the use of technology. And um, that was really, um, I thought, a really great point. You know, having an open relationship as it relates to technology, making sure that we establish unplugged times for our kids, but then we model both of those for ourselves, or we model both of those ourselves. And... Um, you know, I, I thought it was a great article. It, it, it was geared toward, you know, the younger end of the spectrum. I think many young adults, by the time they're 15, 16, and we talk about, you know, these kinds of things, of course, they have to be adapted for the age of of each child. But either either way, it was great advice, you know, just making sure we, we, we set a uh, set of rules for uh, our kids as they grow and get involved in technology where they're healthy and we are you know able to communicate especially during an emergency stay in touch we can do our school work and, and the things that we need to know and have to be able to keep up in the world today but then also kind of look at it from the lens of hey you know there's a time to put that down and be a family Oh yeah, if I if I touch the phone during dinner, Elise is all over me. I, I, I get in trouble. I get in trouble with the eight year old if I touch my phone at dinner. Yeah. Um, so you know, what does good look like? That's like you said, it's going to be good. Good's going to look like a different thing in each and every home. But if if we're introducing technology to an eight year old like you are right now, you know, try to see and read what that set of rules might be for you and and your family. And like you said, talk about it with your ex-wife. Make sure, you know, everybody's on, on the same page if possible. And mm -hmm. uh, if not, at least there's, you know, something you're comfortable with. And, and at least you tried and, you know, you know, you, you've kind of done the due diligence. Well, good. I, we've given the folks a lot to think about, a lot to ponder. We hope you uh, decide what's best for you and your family. Again, we're not the experts. We're just kind of sharing with you our experience with this stuff. And uh, hopefully you guys will will use what you've learned from the show and you'll make your own decision and, and do what works best for your family. So, Stacey, again, bring us up to speed on the back to school drive. How do folks help? 
Oh, yeah. So, like we said at the beginning of the show, guys, uh, smile.amazon.com, pick single parent advocate, cross reference Facebook. Uh, we have an event up where you can take a look at the list of supplies that we're looking to. to to provide each of the kids. Uh, you can have it uh, shipped from smile.amazon here at VentureX and they will have them here for us. And then we'll be doing a sort along with Matthew Six Ministries and distributing on August the 7th to families face to face. And uh, we sure appreciate everybody. And hey, if you don't have time to go to smile.amazon, just you can go to singleparentadvocate.org. If you donate $25, it will pay for a back pack and I'm talking filled backpack to the brim in fact we have to have side side bags too because we always provide you know the wipes and the construction paper and you know the bigger items that don't go into the backpacks well, yeah then uh, there's all the supplies you have to bring into the classroom every yeah day. exactly so we really so, yeah. we do we we comb we scour the earth for the best deals these backpacks are not scant these kids are 25 bucks sends them to school well equipped it really provides the parent two things a little financial relief a little time relief but also it gives them the bandwidth to go and look at the specialty items that they need for each individual classroom, mm -hmm. possibly take a look at what they might need, um, you know, as far as uniforms or clothes go. And then in addition to that, you know, we really want to provide some school book scholarships for some parents, some single parents themselves. So school books, once again, cost anywhere from three to seven hundred dollars depending on uh what the major is and so we do come alongside some families so if you are someone who has uh you know extra income and would like to lean in in the life of a single parent who is raising their kids alone and then also trying to increase their earning power uh, that would be like a big difference any amount helps and uh we're just gra really grateful for bringing uh all of us together to lift lives and help these families have a better chance at success, both whether it's the kids or the parents themselves. There's this thing I always say, the best gift you can give a, a child or a teenager is a happy, healthy, whole, and hopeful parent. And so that's why we really get into the book scholarships. We want the whole family growing and able to survive and thrive. Awesome. So folks, go to uh, singleparentadvocate.org. Make sure to donate to that cause. And uh, again, that drive is August 7th. And we'll continue to talk about it leading up to the big day. Yep. We'll be, we'll be doing the school drive through uh, July 30th. And then we'll have all the families uh, in this area coming together on August the 7th. So, you know, if you want to get involved, feet on the street, and you're in this area, you know, we are always needing more volunteers to help us. So you can always... Uh, go online and send us a note and um, we'll, we'll put you in our volunteer crew, put you to work. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you folks for joining us once again. Uh, if you are not subscribed to the single parent advocate podcast, wherever you're listening, whatever platform, make sure you click that subscribe button. You'll be the first to know when the new episodes come out. So thanks for listening. And we will talk to you folks next week. And happy 4th of July, everybody have a great, great holiday. Yes. Yes.